Hi, it's Shell Rogerson, and today I'm talking about creating a personal altar. So if you don't have an altar in your home, just have a listen, find out what this whole altar thing is about, and then if you like it, I've got some ideas on how you can create one for yourself. So first off, an altar. It's quite simple. It's nothing to do with a particular religion. It is just a space in your home that you devote to whatever is sacred to you. An altar is highly personal. So of course, anything that is sacred to you is highly personal. And so your altar is going to reflect that. So we have to remember that what we create in our internal world is expressed in our external world. So if we're creating peace and love and devotion inside, we can reflect that in the space around us. And likewise, having that in our space will help us kind of come into center point and reconnect with what is sacred. And an altar can be just a simple small space. It doesn't need to be anything large. If you just want to create a small corner in your home or a little shelf to devote to what is sacred to you, that would be a really great starting point. So now let's talk about an altar and religion. So if you are a religious person, an altar can be reflecting your religious beliefs, and that will be a very beautiful and sacred thing for you. If you are not religious, you don't have to have a God or anything that you devote your altar to. You can make it something that you offer to nature or something even bigger. It could just be devoted to love. So there is no confines of religion here. In the yoga context, um, we're coming from a background of Hinduism. And so in Hinduism, there are many gods celebrated and an altar usually is devoted to an Ista Devata, a devoted God for that altar. So it, in Hinduism, you might choose a God or have a God chosen for you by your guru that you honor and you would put that God on your altar. In my case, I believe in all oneness. And so uh, while I was raised Christian, I also in, enjoy the teachings of Buddha. I have decided in my case not to have a religious altar, but instead I do place a Buddha on my altar because it reminds me it's a symbol of meditation. So I'm just going to take you over to my altar as an example and give you some ideas on how you might go about creating one for yourself. I forgot to mention that I share this altar with my husband. So you can also share a space in your home and share the altar. And we just choose these shelves that we have in the home. We've dedicated the center space to our altar. So I'll show you what's in there. This space in the shelf is our altar and I have centered a Buddha in there. Again, it's not really a religious feeling for me so much as a sacred symbol of meditating, of being mindful. Um, and then of course, traditionally in a lot of religions and ceremony, you use candles and flowers to um, celebrate something sacred. So whenever we get a chance, we try to put some fresh flowers on the altar. And then it's just literally what's sacred to us. And that's what we're pla placing on the altar. So for us, our marriage is sacred, our relationship. So we just have this laminated photo collage that we keep on the altar. And then we also have photos of lost loved ones. It's a reminder of love. <laughs> Then we bring in things that we want to call into our lives. So for example, you probably noticed I have a dollar bill. We also have uh, money of various currencies because not only do we accept money in dollars, but we take it in all currencies and we love to travel. And it's really important to me that I live near a beach. So we have a shell. My husband placed this sap recently that he found in the jungle because he connects very much with the jungle where we live. And you'll notice I have some crystals here that they're just something beautiful that um, I connect with. So I've got a little bowl of crystals. You don't need to go out of your way to have any crystals, but if there's something beautiful that means something to you, place it on the altar. Another fun thing that we do is we like to write out 
uh, what we're calling in, our wishes, our blessings, our gratitude. And when we journal these things into lists, we'll sometimes fold them up on a piece of paper and place them on the altar. It's a way to kind of bless what we've written down. And then you'll see behind here for us, we actually clip those and hold them on the altar all year round, which is really fun. So the altar is always changing. There you have it. It's pretty simple. I think I've gone over everything. These are my mala beads. A reminder again to meditate. Well, that's it for today. Just consider how an altar might serve you in your home. And I hope I've given you some ideas on how to create one if you'd like to do that. And in the future, perhaps I can talk about some of the fun little rituals and ceremonies we do with ours um, because there's a lot of fun you can have, like I said, writing those notes. Uh, I've got a few little tricks and tips for that. In the meantime, if you're interested, create yourself an altar and I will see you next time. Thanks.